National Credit Amendment Act was promulgated in the Government Gazette on the 19th of May 2014. The effective date has not yet been tabled. This means that there is no date yet on which credit providers and other regulated entities must start complying with the Amendment Act, although we anticipate that the effective date will be the 1st of October 2014. The Amendment Act was enacted pursuant to the outcomes of an assessment on the effectiveness of the National Credit Act performed by the Department of Trade and Industry, which culminated in a National Credit Act Framework Review document. This revealed that certain gaps in the NCA need to be addressed in order for the NCA to reach its full potential, and also highlighted the challenges that had emerged in applying the National Credit Act, and suggested possible solutions to these challenges. The framework document recognised that, whilst the framework of the NCA and its underlying policy rationale were sound, the application of the legislative provisions of the NCA often fail to ensure the best possible outcomes for consumers. There was therefore a need to clarify how these provisions should be applied to ensure consistency throughout the credit space. This framework review document culminated in the Amendment Act, which serves to amend and clarify certain provisions of the NCA to ensure that the aim set out in the NCA may be achieved. Chief amongst these being consumer protection and transparency and responsibility of credit providers in the credit space. There have been a number of changes to the NCA through the Amendment Act, which affect credit providers, debt counsellors, payment distribution agencies and alternative dispute resolution agents. Some of the more debated amendments to date include the automatic removal of consumer information. Under the new Section 71A, in terms of which credit providers and credit bureaus must remove any adverse credit information of a consumer once the consumer has paid debt in full, giving the consumer effectively a clean slate. This essentially means that the notion of credit history or good and bad credit records will be a thing of the past. This will make assessing a consumer's credit history a very difficult task for credit providers. There's also been an extension of scope of credit providers. Only credit providers with a certain number of credit agreements or where the total principal outstanding debt under all credit agreements reach a certain threshold were regulated. The Amendment Act removes both requirements, instead empowers the Minister to determine the threshold amount for the purposes of determining which credit providers are required to be regulated. No threshold amount has yet been determined, although we anticipate that a nominal amount will be set. It, this means that every credit provider providing credit will be required to register under the Act. Another amendment has been that to the standardised affordability assessment. Um, the non-standardised assessments were one of the difficulties and were regarded as one of the things that led to reckless credit. The new affordability assessment regulations have now been published. Under these regulations, credit providers are not allowed to apply any measures inconsistent with the affordability regulations, which operate as a benchmark. The draft affordability assessment regulations have recently been published. These regulations set out in detail the manner in which a credit provider should conduct their affordability assessments, together with the information that must be requested from the consumer. These regulations are still subject to public comment, and we would advise all interested parties to keep abreast of developments in this area. Another debated amendment has been the delivery of the notice in terms of Section 129 and the extent to which a credit provider must go to bring this notice to the consumer's attention. The Amendment Act now clarifies this and provides that a credit provider must deliver the notice to the consumer by registered mail or personal service on the consumer. Proof of delivery will be evidenced by written confirmation from the postal service or the signature of the consumer. These are just a few of a number of recent amendments which will have a significant effect on the credit industry and we would advise all affected parties to start considering these amendments and the impact that these may have on their current business practice. With potentially a very short lead time, we would urge all credit providers to start thinking about this very, very soon.